Uh, next up, we have Charlotte O'Connor. Please state your name and address for the record when you uh, come up and speak. Charlotte O'Connor. Yes. And again, ma'am, please keep your remarks concise to the point. Okay. My name is Charlotte O'Connor. I live on 3rd Street in Violet, right off of Colonial Boulevard. And I'm here tonight to oppose the naming of the street of Colonial Boulevard to Martin Luther King. I am against uh, No verbal outburst, please. That will be met with removal. Go ahead, ma'am, please. Okay, I think it's ridiculous for one thing why it's got to be renamed. I mean, it's what, maybe about 50 years now it's been colonial. Okay? Uh, there's no reason to change it to uh, any other name. As far as changing it to Martin Luther King, he didn't live in his parish. He did nothing for this parish. He didn't even know this parish existed. Yet, the Spanish colony came down here and they did a lot of work in his parish. They came from the Canary Islands. And they named Colonial after them. So it's something to do with the Spanish Colonial. So why should someone come in and want to change Colonial to Martin Luther King? It, it just makes no sense. Not at all. The, the majority of this parish is against it. So just leave it alone. Let it stay. Colonial Boulevard. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Brian Acosta. And again, please state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Brian Acosta, Colonial Boulevard. Been there 20 plus years. Went through St. Bernard High School with a lot of these guys here. Kevin's one of them. I've never had a racist bone in my body. I've worked for a bunch of them. They've been in their houses, been in a lot of you guys' houses. But if you keep pushing me, I will show you my racist ways. Mitch Landrew can go to hell. Praise the Lord for Bobby Jindal. If it wasn't for Lee, we may be British instead of American. Thank you. Let's hold the uh, chatter down, please. Hold the chatter down. Miss Kimberly Acosta. Kimberly Acosta, 2417 Colonial Boulevard. Um, on December the 10th, 1964, Martin Luther King Jr. said in his acceptance speech for receiving the Nobel Peace Prize, Sooner or later, all the people of the world will have to discover a way to live together in peace. I don't believe this was meant for us to take from one citizen and give to another. The very namesake for which the street is to be changed did not promote diversity amongst one another, but unity, equality, compassion amongst one another. So tell me the members of this council and the community, where is our compassion for the families who years ago bought their first home on Colonial Boulevard, raised their children and even rebuilt their home after, after the faded day on August the 29th, 2005. This is home to them and now we are telling them that their history has to come to an end so that a new history can begin for others. So Chinese author Maya Jian once said, when history is erased, people's moral values are also erased. Where is the moral obligation to the families and community that have been here since the beginning? How is it so easy to strip away a person's heritage? And for what I ask? Standing here today in a room filled with people, let's see. 
We are not debating whether Martin Luther King Jr. is worthy of such a praise. We are debating whether we should be allowed to change history. I will simply leave you with this. <coughs> Hasn't this community lost enough history? And yes, Dr. King, sooner or later, all the people of the world will have to discover a way to live together in peace. Unfortunately, today will not be that day. Thank you. Stacy, Riley. <coughs> Stacy Riley, senior, 2016, La Charlie Lane, Riley, Louisiana. Uh, normally, I don't have a piece of paper, but there's something that I want to touch on to make sure that I get my point across. We talked about a lot of things today. Um, I want to address with you, Mr. Lewis. Uh, back on June 16th, we had an issue where money came up missing in the recreation department. And on camera, on record, you stated that you would go personally down to the recreation department and find out and rectify that situation. Again, on August 4th, when we were at the council meeting, another $1,800 came up missing. You made the same statement that you was gonna go down there personally because you've been in business all your life to rectify that situation. But here tonight, I hear you say, ask the question, have we rectified anything in the recreation department? I understand that y'all caught whoever it was that has taken the money from the recreation department, but yet I don't see any arrests in the newspaper. Can I answer before you go forward, or you got more? Go ahead. Let me, let me say this. I did meet with the administration promptly after the last council meeting. We did talk about a plan. You heard Mr. Gorbity say cameras, POS systems. They did catch the guy that, that has taken the money. It's not my job to arrest anyone. It's not my job to put anyone in jail. That's the sheriff's department's job. Okay, all, but has charges all, been pressed? I, I don't know. That's the administration. It's my job. I, what I want to do is I want to go in and make sure it can't happen again because it happens over and over. So for you to sit here and, 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 and insinuate that I didn't do what I said I would do, I did every single thing I said I would do. I asked the question. And okay, you, and that's why a, I wanted to explain. It, it's, it, it's my job to, to give them the money, or the council's job, not specifically my job, to make the funds available for them to purchase the systems we need in order to try to prevent the theft and recreation. And those meetings have already started. My question to Mr. Garbity wasn't what was rectified. My question was where are we at in the process from the meeting that we had right after the last council meeting because it's, it's the administration's responsibility to move forward and get bids and put out for um, RFPs on this equipment and have it installed. It's not the council's job to do that. It's our job to provide them with the funding. So I, I've done everything I was supposed to do and everything I can do within my power to try to rectify the situation at the recreation department with the exception of taking all the money from the recreation department and shutting it down. That's about the other thing I can do. So the only, in my position, I can only work with them, meet with them, try to assist them, and, and hope that they make good decisions going forward and putting the right systems in place from my life lessons and giving them that information to try to prevent losing another dollar at recreation. Okay. And you and get about 50 seconds, seconds left, Mr. Riley, if you want to continue. Well, how, how does my time, when he, he I asked I stopped the question. your time for his comments. <laughs> oh, okay. You have about 50 seconds left. Oh, wow. Oh, anyway, um, also, as a whole, we've, we've lost over $90,000 for the bus department. Auditorium has lost over excess of $60,000 and recreation about 50 plus thousand dollars, but yet there's still no arrests. I, I, I agree, you need to call the sheriff. Or the well, no, I'm, I'm talking to my council because we, you are elected to watch over the community. Y'all are the ones who's supposed to look out for it. So if you know this, you supposed to put pressure on the administration to find somebody and get them arrested, to press charges. That's what you were elected to do. M M Mr. Raleigh, we're, we are elected to do that. 
as well as your sheriff's elected, your DA's elected to put people in jail. We cannot arrest no one. We can I didn't report. Say you can All we can do them. is get the report. The state made a report. We turn that over to the sheriff's department and to the DA. And from what I understand, it's in the hands of the FBI today. Okay. 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 So I, I definitely can't control what the FBI does. All right. And also, um, at last council meeting, y'all passed a resolution to ask, ask uh, Mr. Peralta to resign. And Mr. Logan made some comments about it's a black eye on the parish, which I agree that the shenanigans of the parish president does look bad on the, on the parish. But at the same time also, and the gentleman was sitting behind me, was talking, we have a bunch of people in here complaining about the name change of a street, but nobody comes in here and protests about when we have money missing. So what kind of statement is that making for St. Bernard Parish when you could come complain about the name change of a street and you're talking about federal dollars. Federal dollars are based on minority. If you can't recognize a minority in this parish, how do you expect to get federal dollars? Tom. Thank you. All right, moving on. Uh, Gilbert King. Uh, my name is Gilbert King, 2213 Delta Queen. Uh, I can't believe this. We arguing over, we looking for out for a half a mile of a street for Martin Luther King. But yet and all, yet and all, here in St. Bernard Parish, all we have is three states, three states, streets in the state. Three. Colonial is not one of them. We was told that was Colonial was, was a state street. It's not. Another thing, Judge Perez Drive. Judge Perez Drive was named it was named Leander Perez in the beginning. Leander Perez was one of the biggest races the South ever had. But yet no, but yet no, yet no, we can't name, we cannot, we cannot name a street half a mile of Martin Luther King for somebody who fought for everybody. It wasn't just because of black or white. The man fought for everybody. He, straight, he was straight up for everybody, man. Half a mile, a half a mile, but yet no, Judge Perez is from one end of the parish to the other end of the parish. Leander Perez, but later on, it was changed, for what I understand, the name had been changed to Melvin Perez now. It's still a Perez, it's still a Perez. So I, I don't understand why we have a problem with changing a street name. A street name. Half a mile, man, a half a mile. A half a mile, but yet no, we have Judge Perez from one end of the parish to the other end of the parish. I, I, I don't understand that. And the people who talking about Colonial don't want it to be changed, I'm more than sure half of them don't even live on Colonial. You know? Right. You know? <laughs> don't live on Colonial, you know? I, I, what I would like, if the majority of the people who decided to change Colonial to Martin Luther King, don't you think that's the American way? That's the way we do it, the majority rules? Right. And that's what we do. And that's two minutes, Mr. Gilbert. Our council up here, if I'm right or wrong, tell me if I'm wrong. If y'all make a decision, don't y'all vote. And what y'all decision is, majority do what? Rule, don't it? Come on, man. Come on. Thank you, Mr. King. <laughs> Minister Charles King. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, we need to hold down the verbal outburst, please. <laughs> Minister Charles King, I reside at 34 for Acorn Drive, Violet, Louisiana. I want to begin with Mr. Honeycutt. 
<clears throat> With all due respect, sir, I don't believe that you're that ignorant to know that that street wasn't belonging to the state. However, however, we believe we've been deceived by the council, particularly Mr. Honeycutt. When we say the council is a colonial, is a state highway, it is a parish street. So I'm saying it is obvious today that the council has defaulted on this matter. As for the citizens, we've been given a bad check. A check that comes back insufficient funds. A check that comes back mock. But we believe that the Bank of Justice is not bankrupt. So I say to this council, if you do not do the right thing in this matter, we have no other alternative but to engage in a more broader and civil form of action of this matter and bring this to the attention of this nation, what this parish is doing. <coughs> may God bless you and may God keep you. Mr. Honeycutt, Mr. Honeycutt, you win the key. Hold yeah. it down, ladies and gentlemen. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. King, I don't recall seeing you at the last meeting. I'm not sure if you actually watched the tape. But what I, what I actually said was that I got information from parish government employee that's working on the street, that's working on the street, and that if, if, if we were playing games, because what we actually did was we just took it off the agenda. We were playing games and I, and you, I was defaulting you, we would have moved to strike it down. And then, whoever applied would have had to go back out and do the petition all over again, would have had to restart the whole process. So what we did was, we essentially tabled it. It's back up today. So it's back up, so nobody got defaulted. It's back up today. We found out between then and now that it's not a state highway and that the submerged roads program does not, does not affect it. So it's, it's back up today and everybody's gonna get their vote today. So nobody was defaulted, nobody was written a blank check. We're gonna decide today. Real simple. So I, I can't say it with all due respect. I, I, I understand, I Mr. King. Me, Mr. I, underst I understand, Mr. King. I understand. You didn't know that that was <clears throat> well, at, look, as council members, we all have full time jobs. Majority of us own businesses. We are part time legislators, and we have to rely. You know, a lot of the time, we have to rely on consultants, we have to rely on employees, you know, people that are paid full-time salaries to do this work to tell us the information. And that's what happened, and it's, it was just unfortunate, but we actually just took it off the agenda. It's back up today, so we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna handle it today. Thank you, sir. Next up, Gary Dubriel. <clears throat> Name and address for the record, please. Gary Dubriel. Uh, uh, Shumat, Louisiana. Um, I lived in this parish for 40, well, just about 43 years of my life. Um, I've lived on 3rd Street and Violet for 35 years of my life. I lived on Colonial Boulevard for five years of my life. Um, I wrote this big, elaborate thing, and I wanted to come in here and say it, but I just don't know how to say it because I know that people are going to take it wrong. Um, but somewhat of it, I'm just going to go ahead and read it. And who don't like it, they don't like it. <clears throat> to the St. Bernard Parish Council and Residents, tonight I come in front of y'all with a heavy heart and mind, and I'm asking that you, the council, vote no on changing Colonial Boulevard in Violet, Louisiana. We live in a parish of tradition and family values. I lived here for 40, well, I went through that with y'all. Um, 
Except for being displaced from Katrina, I lived here. My reasons for having this heavy heart in mind is in the last meeting on August 4th, there was a lot to be discussed in this, me in this meeting, but the council skipped through and went direct to address the street name change proposal. When it came up that the street Colonial Boulevard was said to be a state-owned and operated uh, street, uh, the per well, after they found out about that, the, rep the representative of the NAACP stood up, did his hand like this, and corralled his group on out the door. Okay? Um, this parish has a lot more problems than just a street. Okay? We have a parish president that is making a disgrace of us. Um, we have a water problem that, you know, we're having to deal with too. Um, None of these issues are being addressed by any of them. And if they cared that much about this parish, they address all issues and not just one. Tom. Thank you for your comments, sir. Hey, time limit on you, sir. Time's up? Yeah. That was all right. Saying, but, I mean, that is just my opinion, okay? I mean, I have a lot more I could have said, but I will keep that down. Thanks, Thank you all. Uh, Chance Bergeron. Chance Bergeron. Come on up. How y'all doing? Chance Name Bergeron, 2310 DeLille Street. I just wanted to say that me and everyone I know that lives in St. Bernard Parish is absolutely dumbfounded that we're even entertaining the idea of changing the street to Martin Luther King Boulevard. If you look around the world, every Martin Luther King Boulevard is crime-ridden and drug-ridden. Why the hell would we want that in this parish? All right, all because a few people want it. The rest of us don't. So, it's, uh, it's absolutely absurd. Hold the uh, bur deputy. That dude been talking the whole time, man. I know, trying to get him down. Anyway, it's absolutely ridiculous, all right? Martin Luther King was a great man, and all of the streets that are named after him does not reflect the content of that man's character, all right? That's all I gotta say. It's absolutely absurd. Thank you, Tom. Charles Williams. Good evening, Council. I lived in St. Bernard Parish my whole life. We all know August 29, 2005, we will be sketched in our minds forever. It divided us. It separated us. <coughs> they say. But that's okay. Because if you look behind me now, you will see that's not true. We are stronger than ever. We have what we call the three C's in our DNA. Compassion, conviction, and most of all, courage. We rolled up our sleeves. We got to work. A monumental task, if you will. Now, almost 10 years later, our great vision on St. Bernard Parish is not complete. We still have slabs that are shameful, a shameful reminder with grass growing around them. Lots overgrown, houses that are abandoned. Water we pay almost double for that has brain-eating amoeba. So I asked the council, don't we have enough to prior prioritize on in the name of a street? They say our parish, they say our parish government has a black eye. I say, sometimes this happens when you fight for what you believe in. Thank you.
Andrew Rose. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andrew Rhodes. I live at 3208 Moss Lane in Violet. Like everybody else that's got up here, I'm a lifelong resident of St. Bernard Parish. I love St. Bernard Parish. I love the people that's in it. I don't care what color they are. And I don't think this needs to be a color issue. But the first thing I do want to say is I'm very disappointed from the last meeting because I don't think it was just a thing of you guys tabling this issue. I think it was you guys lying to our community. And I don't think that's right because we, whether it's the white community or the black community, we entrust in you guys to do the right thing. That's a song. That's a movie. Do the right thing. The right thing is that, and again, it's only my opinion, when somebody in a particular community, whether it's in Araby, whether it's in Chalmette, whether it's in Violet, when those people come together and those people say, I want to change this street, and a majority of those people on that street say that, then I don't believe that nobody else has a say-so. And I think you guys owe this community an apology because it was a lie. And as you said, Mr. Honeycutt, the only thing I, I have a problem with was you didn't check your facts. You gotta be a fact checker, okay? Because that's what the Republican Party do. They don't check their facts, they just make statements. Okay? So, be a, be, be a fact checker. Be a fact, be a fact checker because that time is coming and this time is here. This time is here is when you guys are gonna be in our community and you're gonna be looking for us to reelect you. And, and I, I will just simply say that at this present time that none of you guys have earned our trust. You have not earned our trust. So, so when you walk in our community and you say, help me, I think there are going to be a lot of people not willing to do that. Because in order to get help, you have to be, a tr you have to be trusted. And right now, you're not trusted. Thank you, Okay? Ken. But I just want to add one thing and I'll stop. Um, I want you guys to know that as a courtesy, we are coming to you because the Planning Commission overwhelmingly said change the name. Now, you can change the precedence, you can change the precedence in this community by overruling them, but you also have to know that there is a higher authority than you guys. And the last time you went with all of these folks who went against issues that we brought up, it cost you $1.8 million, okay? So I just want you guys to think about that. I well, it was a complex. Thank you, They're Mr. Rose. here. They're here. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Reverend Raymond Brown. Reverend Brown. Thank you, um, Council Chairman. Uh, and the distinguished council members, uh, Reverend Raymond Brown. Um, I reside in New Orleans, Louisiana. My father, Clarence Sanchez, um, I born in St. Bernard Parish in a little small place called Highland, Valley, Louisiana. But I moved to New Orleans after Bessie. And that said, I, I, I look around me, I just want to let y'all see this picture, how beautiful it is. Come on, can I get a clap on Dr. King's picture? Can I get a clap on White folks, y'all don't like Dr. King? Y'all don't like Dr. King? Okay, thank you. you. You can see the racial polarization. You like Dr. King and love it. You like what he did. 
I, I, I think that um, I think that we need to try to coexist. I talked to you about that. Dr. King said that we either live in peace or we all perish as fools. Matter of fact, half of the white people in here, y'all got black blood in y'all. Y'all might want, don't want to accept it. But it's the truth. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Listen good. Listen good. All things. Wait, listen good. Listen good. All things. Wait a minute. Uh, ain't, ain't, ain't nobody pure white. Ain't nobody pure black. Ain't nobody pure white. Ain't nobody pure black. We all are, like Dr. King said, interrelated. We got blood traits. My grandfather was Ignatius Sanchez. He was a white man from Spain. That's my great grandfather. Look how black I am. The, the, the name change street. The, some folks come with racial animosity. I mean, they come with this racist type of attitude about a name change. It's 2015, Reverend. Uh, have we gotten over our racial uh, past? Have we got over our racial past? I think we can coexist. And I was sharing with the, uh, the distinguished chairman. In New York City had the same type of dispute over a street name. White folk were calling black folk N-word. Black folk calling white folk hunky and they're going back and forth. And all of a sudden, they got behind closed doors and realized, you know what? We can emerge both streets. Why it can't be Colonial and MLK? All y'all pay taxes. All y'all pay taxes. All y'all vote, go to the polls and vote. Is that right? Huh? We, don't we vote? Don't we pay taxes? Aren't we citizens of this great state? Huh? Don't we see each other in the mall and shake hands? Do we do that? Don't we, don't we see each other at Walmart? How you doing, Mr. Brown? I'm like, oh, I'm doing pretty good. What's up? But yet, when we, and we go, we... we I'm Hold it down, please. It out. You got about 15 seconds. Okay. Let's... You say you're going to give me an extended time. There's 15 seconds you have, sir. Come on. Okay. But I think that the council should defer <coughs> the vote against it. Even this man right here agreed. Well, we can't coexist with the vote of the name. Why is it strip the name down? Uh, agree that we can coexist. Let me say this: we can coexist just like they did in New York City, just like they did in New York City, and leave the name up, put MLK name on the sign because they have a right to freedom and justice and equality in this parish. Thank you, Reverend. In this parish. Thank you, Reverend. Uh, next up, Kevin Williams. Good evening, guys. Um, my name is Kevin Williams. Start off with I wanted the Planning Commission. When this um, street name come in front of me, um, the, the petition that came in front of me um, was 95% for it. But before I get in that, I want to do a little correction that you guys should have corrected. Start off with when Judge Perez Drive was named, I'm the one that named that street. And let me clear something real quick in here. Melvin Perez was a dear friend of mine's. I was raised with Melvin. Melvin was like a father to me. Now, I don't care what you guys say about Leander Perez, and I'm talking to the black and the white, but Melvin Perez, I had keys to that man house. I slept at that man house. It was no racism with Melvin Perez. So I wanted to clear that. And that street is not Leander Perez anymore. It's Judge Melvin Perez Drive. That's for anybody that needs to know that, okay? Now, now let's get to business since I got that clear. Leander Perez the star. Absolutely, and, and, and that's exactly what I say. Yeah, it was Leander Perez, but now it's no longer Leander Perez, and it's not a racist name anymore. It's Judge Melvin Perez. So anybody don't like that, they could come see me later. But now, nah, let me go to business. Colonial Boulevard. I took a, strip, a trip down Colonial 
when that street name came in front of me on the planning board with a petition 95%. And I voted for that street to be named Martin Luther King. And the only reason I voted for that street because it came in front of me. The only reason my nose got put in there because I'm on the planning board. But let me say this. Plaquemine, Sampanoa, the lower part of the parish, Araby, Mary, Shelman, nobody really should have anything to do with that street. The people on Colonial should make that vote. Whether it's for it or against it. I don't care if they never name it Martin Luther King. It doesn't make a difference to me. The NAACP should not be involved. The white racists, the black racists, the religious crew, because they're all going crazy. Because nobody's stopping to try to make peace with this. Look what's going on in our parish. Look how this parish is divided right now. You got the blacks and the white are fighting. You got to try to bring peace to this thing. So if you vote for it, I don't care if you vote for it or you don't, but put it into this street tonight where these people could go on with their life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Rachel Bazile. Good afternoon, Rachel Bazile, 1200 B Bayou Road, Eastern St. Bernard. At the last council meeting, we turned in the petition and was speaking on the behalf of the over 1,600 signatures, I wanted the exact <laughs> history of why it was named Colonial Boulevard. So I did a little research and I contacted Ms. Dodd Benj. She is the owner of Delico Corporation and a very active member of the Los Linos community. She wrote a brief letter and asked me to read it to you. I would like for it to be added to the official record of this meeting. Dorothy Benj wrote, I am writing to give you some little known history of the origin of the name of Colonial Boulevard. The subdivision surrounding the boulevard was developed by my cousin James Acroy and our cousin Earl Acosta. They chose the name Colonial because Louisiana was a colony of Spain before 1803. While Louisiana was a colony of Spain, Spain settled Canary Islanders, Islenos, in the parish beginning in 1778 until 1783. This St. Bernard settlement is the only one remaining of the four original settlements to survive and maintain its cultural identity in this state. The St. Bernard Islenos are the last living vestige of Spanish colony in Louisiana. For this reason, they thought it would be appropriate to name the subdivision's main street Colonial Boulevard. I hope you will consider the historical significance of this naming of Colonial Boulevard as St. Bernard's history. As all of you know, St. Bernard has an incredible history. Please do not change it. We should be adding to it, not taking away from it. History lost leads to history repeated. This time of the meeting is about public opinions. And just because some disagree does not make my statements at the last meeting a racial issue. What it does make me, though, is a proud person of my heritage, my community, and a proud American. Happy time. Thank you, ma'am. Let's settle down, settle Let's down, go. please. No more verbal outbursts. Let's settle it down, please. We don't have any more. Madam Clerk uh, signed up for public speaking. Thank you. And uh, any interest of time in the crowd? Is there any objection, gentlemen, to moving ahead to item number 20? Any objection? 
Seeing no objection, we move on to item number 20, which is up for introduction. Summary number 3275, Planning Commission recommended approval on 72815, removed prior to introduction on 8415, introduced by administration on 81815, an ordinance to rename Colonial Boulevard to Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. We have a motion and a second. We have a motion by Mr. Lewis, second by Mr. Lewis. All right, gentlemen, any discussion? Come on, talk about Dr. King. Come on. Seeing no one in the queue, gentlemen, you can vote your machines for introduction. That item fails. Uh, the uh, vote was 7 0, Nick. Publicly announced. Wasn't showing on the screen. Apologies. All right, gentlemen, no objection. We move to the orders of the day. Move and return to the orders of the day. Public hearings, item number seven, summary number 3270, introduced by administration on 8415. An ordinance to amend ordinance SBPC number 1584-1214, an ordinance to adopt the 2015 St. Bernard Parish annual operating and capital budget. Anyone here to speak for or against summary number 3270? Uh, it was publicly announced. The vote was 7-0 nay. The item failed. Need to hold it down, please, so we can return to regular order of business. We'll move for uh, any objections to a brief recess. A lot of chambers time to clear. No objection. We'll be in brief recess till the chamber's clear.